So hello and welcome back to Strath Pepper Junction. Uh, we have a short video today, one of the Strath Shorts video series, and I'm just going to be having a quick look at a little project that I've been working on over the last few weeks. Uh, and what is that project? Well, modelling squares. Okay, so modeling squares, what are they? Well, they are squares which are used for modeling. And they're just like the kind of set squares that you get at school or that you would uh, use in woodworking, that kind of thing. And they enable you to either draw out a, a square if you're wanting to mark something out on some card, something like that. Uh, and they also enable you to create a square joint if you're wanting to join two bits of material, like so, uh, then they get around that age old problem of how do you hold things together when you're gluing. So if you want to come in through the glue on that side, you want to come in with the glue on that side, that kind of thing. Bit tricky. Anyway, this is where they come in. Gives you second, third, fourth hands so you can keep everything together, but perfectly square. Okie dokie. Right. So a lot of you will have seen these about. You can buy them online. I think Bachman, certainly Bachman in America makes them. Um, lots of other companies do, but the main thing is they tend to be quite expensive. Uh, being a frugal Scot, <laughs> I thought I could probably do something a little bit better. I mean, I've seen these go for oh, in excess of 20 quid, and really all they are is two bits of plastic, um, sometimes wood, uh, and some magnets that hold them together. Um, so that's what I did, design these two squares. Now, these ones are the, the small ones that I've designed, but I've also designed it so that you can scale it up. So you can uh, print it at twice the size and use magnets that are twice the size and it'll work just as well. Um, so what we're gonna do is um, I'm gonna bring in from the side here some unassembled um, versions of these and I'll show you how I stuck them together. If you want to follow along at home, if you've got a 3D printer, I'm gonna make this file available for free via my website. So you can download it, you can print it yourself, you can make them, assemble them, and then you can use them. Uh, one thing to mention, um, this Revel glue is pretty good for use with plastic card, the stuff I had out before, uh, but it isn't very good for PLA or PLA plus, which is what I'm using for this particular printout. What I tend to use for gluing together, um, not gluing, sorry, welding together, solvent welding together, PLA or PLA plus, is EMA uh, plastic weld. This stuff is absolutely amazing. It's pretty bad for you, pretty bad for the environment, but it's definitely the, the go-to uh, solvent weld that I use for different plastic types, and particularly if you want to weld different types of plastic together. This is this is great stuff. Okay, so what we're gonna look at now are some of the components, well, all of the components and how they go together. So without further ado, and with a little bit of television magic, and there we have it. So we've got five main components uh, for the actual plastic elements. We've got two parts for one of the, the squares, we've got two parts for the other square, and we've got this wee uh, gizmo that uh, gets inserted into the middle, and I'll explain that in due course. But we don't need this right now, so we'll pop that just to the side there, and what I'll do now is bring in the magnets. So the magnets that I've used for this particular one are round neodymium magnets, um, and they are six mil by three mil. Uh, and they will fit in the wee slots which have been uh, engineered into the plastic. So we need uh, four in each, so I'll open the packet here. One thing just to say with neodymium magnets, I'm sure most of you will have come across them before because they're, well, we use them for lots of things in model railways. Just get the crinkling out of the way. Uh, but they are very strong um, and can create a lot of damage. So do keep them away from pets and children uh, and anybody who might swallow them. So anyway, right, so we've got two there for one side. We've got two there for the other. Well, uh, four now. Uh, and uh, we've got four for the other side there. So I'll just pop these away. Whoop. See what I mean about them being magnetic? <laughs> so pop the rest of them away there. Uh, I will move on to assembling and gluing. Okay, so the first thing we want to do then is to actually stick magnets in. Um, and actually that's pretty much the only bit that you can go wrong on on this, is making sure you've got all the poles correct. So what I normally do is to get the, the four that I want together like this, uh, and just carefully break them off, and slot them in the holes here, in the same way that I've taken them off, if that makes any sense, like that. And then again like that push them in hard, and again like that. 
in there. Oh, that one's just come out, right. If you do get one lost like that, stick it back on like that, and that means that you can then pop it back in in the right angle. Okay, so that's all these ones in fine. And I think what I'll do is just a quick dry fit. So we'll pop the lid on it just like that. Uh, and then we'll move across to sticking the magnets in the other one. So the key point now is we have to get these magnets the opposite way around um, to how they are in, in this one. So the way that I tend to do that is just let them stick on the outside like that. And then take it off, hold it like that, and then carefully peel the magnet out and then slot it in. It's probably easier to do this in practice than it is to explain, but uh, if you get it wrong, do a dry fit, test it, see how it works. If it doesn't work, weak them out, spin them round, and stick them back in again. Now, I think this one, yeah, that one I missed. There we go. Right, so I think that's probably right. So we'll pop the lid on there, and let's just bring these together and see how we do. Quick check. Yeah, everything's working. Brilliant. Now, one thing just to mention now, if you're using multiple ones of these and you want them all to be completely interchangeable, now is the time to make sure that the, the way you've got the poles of the magnets arranged for these guys is the same for these ones. And I, I've no idea whether these are, so we'll see if I'm lucky or unlucky today. Uh, un unlucky today. <laughs> so what I'm gonna do, because I would like all these to be uh, to, to be equal so I can interchange, I'll switch these guys' magnets around so that they'll work with the other one. But I'll do that off camera and we'll come back in a minute to glue everything together. Okay, so that's the magnets all uh, lined up. We've checked them so that the, the poles are all correct here and they're also correct with this. So these two are now compatible. Let's just do one final check just so that we uh, are sure. There we go, compatible, there we are. So what I'm gonna do is just firstly get rid of the magnets because these have, have a habit of being attracted to anything and everything that's metal and that whizzes across the table. So we've got rid of them. Right, so what I'm gonna do now anyway is to, to uh, weld the plastic together. So I have learned from mistakes by having these two too close to each other with the lids off and then the magnets fly out. So we'll pop one to one side, we'll take the lid off this one here. Uh, and all I'm going to do is use the plastic weld and uh, I'm going to use a metal, this is a Tamiya paint stirrer, but I'm just going to use something that I can hook out uh, the plastic weld and then lay it on and uh, spread it out. The one thing to mention is if you are using a, a, a metal spatula, uh, it is going to stick to the magnets, so do be careful. But anyway, let's get on with this. So we'll just do this. I should also mention that normally I wear gloves for this, but I started um, filming and forgot I hadn't got my gloves on. So uh, yeah, point off for me there. Uh, it is pretty nasty stuff this, so I do, I do suggest you don't get it on your skin too much. Anyway, right, okay, that's, uh, that's probably enough here. So what I'll do now is just pop this to one side and do be careful with plastic weld because it, it does weld just about any plastic. Uh, in, including cutting mats and all the rest. Right, okay, so we're just gonna bring these two faces together, make sure everything lines up. There we go, I've got a little fingerprint on there, but hey-ho, these things happen. Doesn't matter. Right. So plastic weld, uh, like all of these plastic welds, works pretty quickly. I just like to press it down, make sure all the, the surfaces are nice and square. Great. Okay, so that's one done. Um, we're gonna move on to this next one here. Uh, and then once I've got this one glued in, or welded in exactly the same way, then we'll just look at the, the finishing steps. Okay, so I'm just holding together this, uh, this second square. Uh, and one thing just to mention, um, which I should have done it earlier on, is the way that I designed this is there's little guides that help you to um, locate the top and bottom halves perfectly. Uh, they just clip into to where the magnets are and help to secure the magnets so you don't get any shaking. Um, and uh, they also just help you to, to make sure that everything lines up totally squarely. So that is the... Uh, that is the two sets together, stuck together. What I often like to do now is just to, to brush 
Um, I like to use the metal spatula just to, to lather on the, the plastic weld, but I sometimes will then just get a little brush and just apply um, just a little bit of extra weld just along the, the seams here, just to make sure that everything's stuck together. But on this one, it seems to be absolutely fine. So I think I'll, I think I'll leave this one as is. But anyway, right. So that's the, the two welded together. So I'll let these dry for about 20 minutes and we'll come back and just have a quick look at everything. And then I'll explain what that wee bit's for as well. Okay, so some time has passed. Everything is set up fine. Uh, the two parts are solid, they're together and uh, job's good. And what I want to quickly touch on now is just this wee uh, widget, <laughs> wee spare wheel, the thing that's been sitting at the side. What is it all about? Okay, so for those of us who have used these modeling squares before, um, we'll probably know that they often come out, uh, come with these wee depressions or the wee cutouts or the wee squared off parts here. Uh, and that is so that when you have got your parts in here like so, stick them together like that, that you can, you can get the glue in round the back like that, or you can get the glue in round the front like that. Um, and the square doesn't inhibit anything. And it's a really good idea. Um, it stops things getting stuck to each other and creating all sorts of problems. However, it can sometimes be a wee bit tricky to line up these edges and get them to butt up together you know, entirely square, which I, of course is the whole point of these things in the first place. So what I have done to, to try to get around that little issue, uh, which I sometimes have, uh, is, is to create this little insert here. And once you pop that insert in, it carries across the, the lines, from the top to the bottom, and it allows you to line things up totally square like that. So the edges butt up together fine. Um, and what you can do then is if you want, uh, depending what you're doing, you might just want to glue the inside like this and like that, uh, and that's absolutely fine. But if you want to say glue the outside of it there, all you need to do is to, to get a sharp edge or something like that and just ease it out like that. It will drop out easily and then it will leave the edges butted up together, still at 90 degrees. Um, so you can get in there with a the glue on the back side here. Um, and it means that there's no faffing about, we're trying to rearrange things or anything like that. So yeah, that's the, the kind of uh, Strath's Pepper special uh, element to this particular uh, modeling square. Um, and as I say, it's just a little insert that you put in before it slide out at the end. All right then, so finally, just to wrap up, as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, I'll make the, the uh, STL file for these uh, little modeling squares available via my website, link in the description below. Feel free to download it and print it yourself. Um, please don't share it commercially, but other than that, for yourself, your friends, whatever, that's absolutely grand. If you use it, if you've got any queries or any suggestions for improvements or just want to talk about how you've experienced or, or any alternatives or anything else like that, comment section below and I always try to respond to folks' comments. Um, if you've not subscribed to the channel, please do that as well. There's the wee bell too, so ring that bell and then you'll never miss out on a Strath Pepper Junction video. Um, but I'll wind it up there. Thank you very much for watching and all that remains to be said is cheerio for now. Bye-bye.